Hey guys, and welcome to The Highlander Life. Uh, today I'm in Norfolk, Nebraska uh, at some friend's house. Uh, the trip out here from San Diego was pretty awesome. Uh, the Highlander did great. It does really well on these road trips. It's pretty comfortable. Uh, the thing that's been missing from this whole equation are the speakers and the fact that the speakers in this, the rear speakers in this car are either blown or they're just horrible. You put any low end at all and the sound in the system is really, really just blow and it's just destroyed, in my opinion. Uh, and if you, you know, we'll give you some samples here of what it sounds like. The thing I want to do with this now is I want to go ahead and replace these speakers with something a lot better. Now keep in mind, this is the original, this is the XLT version of the Highlander, so it does not have the JBL sound system at all. It has uh, the two up front, the two in the doors, and the two back here. And the two back here are absolute garbage. If you pan the speakers all the way to the front and crank up the low end, it actually has something there. Uh, it's reasonable. It sounds like a couple of, you know, six by nines at best. Uh, pan it all the way to the back, even just to one side, and it just sounds just atrocious. <laughs> And so what I've done is I've gone uh, on the Kicker website and looked to see what parts were compatible. And what do you know? You can get this set of speakers and they even come with the mounting brackets that take this speaker and mount it perfectly in the Highlander. It also includes the electrical wiring connection. So this is a no solder installation. So I'm gonna show you the steps, pulling the door panel off as well as uh, pulling the speaker out, replacing it, putting it back in again. And you also may have noticed a couple other things uh, happening here. For one is this carbon fiber uh, look wrap that I put here and I put it here as well. I think it looks really slick and there's a video up here that you can uh, click on to see how I put that in and what the steps are to do that wrap. Uh, and also uh, links below or in the video there are links below as to where to buy, uh, buy this material. So anyway, let's get back to this speaker here. Uh, this is the DSC 670. It was about $65 for the pair, including the mounting brackets and the uh, adapters and free shipping, and it came in two days priority mail. So uh, pretty impressed with how they, uh, how they handled that. Uh, there will be a link in the description below to this exact speaker uh, if you want to take a look at it. There are a number of these six, six to six and a half to six and three quarter, in this case, uh, speakers that will fit this car. They list tons and tons that are available. This one just kind of seemed like a value for the money solution and the reviews seem to be good on it. Um, but the reviews are good on, on lots of them. So honestly, uh, it, it was a bit, a little bit of a, just a hit or miss uh, pick for me. Uh, for today, let's just do the rear door, uh, panel removal, speaker removal, and reinstallation. The tools for this job, they'll be real simple. We're gonna need a couple panel removal tools. I'll have a link down below to get these off Amazon. You just want something that's soft, that won't damage or scratch things uh, too much. And uh, a Phillips screwdriver. And we'll see once we get in here if there's anything else. But this should get us uh, into the, the, the door and the, uh, the panel uh, clips we need to remove. So on the door, we have to remove a little, little plate that's behind here. Uh, there's a little door right there we have to pop open and take one screw out there. And then we're gonna pop off this plastic piece here and behind there, there's one more screw we have to get to. Let's go ahead and do that. Try to find panel removal tool. So come in behind this piece here. And it pops up free. Open the door. Release that. You see there's one screw behind here. Need to remove. So to get behind here, it's kind of hard to even get to the little um, uh, wider slot. So I'm gonna just come in the top here and just kind of work my tool around the corner. Should, uh, there we go. You're trying to release that, that little tip right there. Uh, if you can get to that easier, great. And then screwdriver for that. Go to a little, little wider tool. And I like to scrape these edges off in case they have any burrs. 
last thing we want to have is our tool that's not supposed to scratch. Go ahead and scratch things. You might even use some sandpaper if you have a really sharp edge somewhere. You're just going to come under this lip here, give it a little twist, and just pop that loose. Right to come around. And that released quite easily. Now there's electrical back here, obviously, and there's a little button you have to push towards the center line of this. I'm going to push it with my finger towards me and give this a little rock back and forth. There we go. Side. And you can see there's that button I was pushing, that tab. It's pushing just like that. Now we got Phillips right there. That's the last of our Phillips screws. Everything else is going to be clips. Okay, now we need to remove this piece here. Now here you can see I've already wrapped it. Uh, but all you really have to do is there's like three clips back here. So we're just going to come in and get behind the foam that's back here. And give it a yank. And your fingers along on both sides. Just try to carefully just pry it out. Go. You can see there was one, two, three clips on that. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to come in this line here and pop free a number of clips all the way around to the back side here. Once this is off, we're going to lift the whole panel up and off the hook that's kind of on. Here's the door here. This is this, this piece. So we're going to lift this up and off. Uh, and then we have to be careful because we have connections to the door latch. And if you have a higher-end car, the, the Platinum Edition or Limited, uh, you'll, you'll have a light right here that you'll need to also remove or disconnect the power from. So once the door is off, either have someone help you uh, or you need to be able to kind of hold it awkwardly and get to the back side of this thing uh, to you know, disconnect these points here. There's also a possibility if there's a mechanism back here this is all attached to with two clips, it's possible just to remove the whole mechanism and allow it to, to just recess back inside, and you'll see that. Uh, that was a, uh, an easier way, in my opinion, than actually removing the cables that go to the door. So we'll see which one makes sense with this door. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up here at the top, the panel tool, and see if I can find the first clip. There's one there. What else? And there's one here. Let me see there's one higher. One right here, looks like. Okay, down. That one. That one. Sometimes this is really, really tight, so so then you have to get right to where that. clip is, get your tool right up against it and then pry right in that spot. Fortunately, this is impossible to show. I'm just going along and finding Okay, so now we have it to where the door is completely loose. This is where we need to open, open lift this off and look behind and figure out how to disconnect the linkages. Okay, so I don't have a place to put this. I'm just gonna open it up and see what happens. I'm gonna lift. Got one more clip here. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna look back here. Here's my two cables. I'm going to remove the clips very carefully. And I'll show you what I'm doing. Okay, so this is what I just did. If you look on here, there's a clip there and a clip there. And on here at the door, there's a clip right there and a clip right there. So this piece 
was hooked in and those two clips right there were clipped there. So I basically fingernailed that, pushed down, fingernailed this, pulled up to this piece, released, and I just pulled it out. Now, the other way to do this is to lift these clips out that way and actuate it and release the ball. Um, what I don't like is this is made of plastic. So if you're doing this on an older car, I've broken this tab before. So you want to just go straight in, move it till it's kind of locked, and then click it back in. So if you don't want to deal with these clips, you can certainly just pull up on these, lift them, and release them, or vice versa. Put the ball back in and clip it in place. And that's your door latch and your door lock. So either way, either way seems to work. Uh, I just don't like the brittle nature of these, but then again, I also don't like the brittle nature of this plastic up here. So it feels like something that uh, long-term because of the plastics involved, this could fail. Okay, so here's our uh, piece of wonderful speaker. This is a very droney, a droney sound, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn the music on and uh, see if I can let you hear that. You can see why the speaker is just horrible compared to the front speaker and why I think there's hope that if we were to replace this speaker with a, a name brand uh, nicer speaker, we will end up with something a little closer to something we can actually use. Literally, if I pan anything from the front even to the mid scale on the controls, uh, it, it it sounds so, the, the low end back here sounds so wompy and, and distorted that it actually just messes up the sound for me. So. Uh, anything is going to be better than what I have right now. Uh, now, note that in the demo we just did, the treble control and the mid mids control will turn all the way down so that we could just, as much as possible, listen to the low end. And the settings were equivalent, the same volume level. I just panned all the way front, all the way back and back, you know, back and forth. So you get an idea at the equivalent energy level, if I just put it to the middle, the front speakers sound fine and the rear speakers are just thumping all over the place. And so again, it's just garbage. And let's uh, let's see how big the magnet is on the back of these, as well as uh, just the overall quality of them. So let's pull them out. Wow, <laughs> this thing weighs nothing. That's a bad sign. Uh, and the magnet on here is this thin little band of magnet. Um, in fact, this is all one molded piece. Let's do a little unboxing here. So this is the this is the set. Get manuals and specs. You get wiring, which in this case we won't need, but it goes just a bare wire from the terminals. You get wire. Uh, crimps instead of soldering, you can just crimp on. Again, we don't need them for this application. We get hardware if you're mounting this directly into a box and gonna use the speaker grills. Again, we don't need these. And let's, see, let's get a speaker out of here. There's two of these cardboard wraps. There's our speaker. <laughs> and right away it weighs a couple times as much as this. Just, just the magnet alone, I can tell, is very heavy, which is what you'd expect. Okay, there's a speaker grill. Okay, we don't need this uh, for this application because the grill is part of the door already. Um, yeah, we don't need that. And here's our speaker. This has a ribbed uh, polyurethane surround on it, and the magnet is just, it's substantial. Like you can, it's the weight, the, the balance point of this is, is further back than that. So this thing is, is largely, the weight, most of the weight of this is the magnet. Again, going back to this guy, uh, the magnet is this thin, this thin little band here. Okay, so when I ordered this, not only did I get the speaker, I also received this speaker adapter, which is labeled for 
uh, Toyota multi-application uh, speaker adapter. So let's pull this out and see how this fits. Uh, I also received this cable adapter set, which is going to give me that connection there directly to the speaker terminals. So this adapter, we're just going to clip on that. So let's go ahead and clip this guy in. Now it looks like we have different size wires here. So white is a wider, which is this wider terminal, which is the plus uh, on the on the speaker. And we don't want to get this backwards. Mechanically, that would be impossible, I guess, unless you just jammed it on there. Uh, but if you put speakers out of phase with each other, the low end will actually cancel. They do this because this is a really small connector here versus on the negative versus the bigger one for the positive. Let's go ahead and clip it on and uh, see how it sounds. Okay, uh, so what I just heard was substantially better. It wasn't like remarkable. Uh, it's the sound of a small speaker um, trying to push really, really hard. Now I had the bass control turned all the way up. So that's kind of maxing things out, definitely. And this is a six and three quarter inch speaker. It's about as big a kit as we can get just using the adapter plates here. Now, of course, we could probably do something bigger speaker wise in this opening, if we were to, you know, know exactly what the, the door cutouts was. Uh, I was kind of looking for a drop in. I wasn't looking to do something that people couldn't just reproduce quickly. Uh, I'll continue to keep my eye up for some kind of retrofit kit that lets you put like a six by nine back here or more like an eight inch speaker, something like that. Uh, for now, that already sounds better. Uh, let me get it installed in here because just the back pressure, which is why I was kind of putting my hands behind it. The enclosure makes the speaker. I mean, you can have a great speaker with no enclosure and it'll sound like garbage. I'm feeling like, yeah, you have to break out. All these tabs are designed for the different size speakers and they're back scored. So I'm gonna score out uh, or pop out all of these inner braces so that the speaker can sit flush uh, up against the, this bezel here. That's better. Now let me look at how it fits in the door. So these tabs here clearly don't go to anything. I can break those off. Putting the bottom screw and the top right screw in is fine. And I can just barely see the, the corner of the, the screw. The screw wants to go right through the middle of that plastic there. So I need to be able to shift this whole thing this way just slightly. First off, these tabs I don't need. do this is how it sat so I'm gonna come in with a, a step drill like this and just kind of come in and make it a little bit larger that was kind of a lot of it let's go by one one step on each of these
okay, you can see uh, that just popped to life as soon as I plugged it in and you heard the, the sample there. Well, I'll give you an example of all three, the uh, front speaker, the back speaker factory, and the back speaker with these kickers in it. First thing I'm going to do is reconnect. Okay. Set the door in place. Okay, I should be able to click first. Okay, it tells me it's lined up. Make sure you've got your uh, cable here available. to get these started. Okay. I'll go ahead and clip all the clips down now. Okay. I'm gonna tighten these three screws. While you have the door off, it's a great time to clean it. You can get all the nooks and crannies and easily get up under here and behind where these pieces snap in place and clean them out. Um, little nooks and crannies everywhere. Let's see. Okay, up here, remember this plate, let's open the door, get it lined up. Clicks in place, should work like normal. This little door gets closed. Yeah. And then our handle. Let's get snapped back on. That. And that's our door. Now, now that the uh, speaker grill is in place and the door's buttoned up, let's listen to it one last time. Again, these were Kicker DSC 670s, and I'm gonna go ahead and install it the other side, put this door back together. But hey, there's one more thing, one more fun thing we're gonna do here. Uh, one thing I don't like about this car, leave me in my top 10 don't like about the Highlander. If you wanna watch that video, it's probably up here. Uh, but the thing I don't like about the feel of the doors is the fact that when you close the doors, they have that oil can burp sound to them. Just has like this whoa sound to it. There's just so much unsupported sheet metal and it's fairly thin. Uh, my old car was an Infiniti G37. You close the doors, man, it was solid. Just boom. This one, you, you close it. It sounds like you're closing a, you know, my daughter's Yaris, quite honestly. Uh, just big and hollow and, and wompy sounding. And, and it's just, <laughs> every time I close the door, I think cheap. Okay, so what I have, let me get it for you. So what this stuff is, pull out a sheet here. This is a little over a tenth inch thick 
material. You can see it just looks like uh, like rubber here. Uh, this is butyl tape in a sheet form. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open this panel up and cut sheets of this material out to cover the inside of all four doors. And my hypothesis, and that's what it is, is that when I close the door, it'll have more of a thud sound because the, the metal itself will be that much more supported and damped by all this, uh, this material. <laughs> this is awesome. Okay. When the low end is kicking on the speakers, you can feel it right through the door as well. So this is gonna act as a weight deadener in a sense and it might actually improve the tone of the low end. If you like this video, please uh, hit subscribe below so you can see uh, and get an announcement on your feed uh, of the next video coming out in this Highlander series. I have a lot of mods in mind and you've seen a couple of them come already here like the wrap, uh, but uh, stick around. Uh, if you've got a Highlander, especially the XLE, the lower end version, I wanna show you a bunch of fun things we're doing here to make this uh, a little more upscale without having to throw $10,000 at it to get the next version. Uh, at this point, if you wanna see a video on how I do this whole beautiful tape work, uh, click up here. That's the end of Highlander Life. Until next time, be blessed.